Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because CeraVe has just recently come out with a new cleanser and we're gonna review it today. So this is their hydrating cream to foam cleanser. I will do a deep dive on the ingredients. I tested it out for you guys so you can see what it actually looks like as I'm applying it. And I had to do a little comparison between their other two cleansers as well. So I will compare it to their foaming facial cleanser and their hydrating facial cleanser and let you guys know which one I think is best. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this brand new CeraVe cleanser, you are in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. So again, this is called their hydrating cream to foam cleanser for normal to dry skin. It says that it's a gentle foaming formula with three essential ceramides. It cleanses, hydrates, and removes makeup without disrupting the skin's protective barrier. It has amino acids in it to help to attract and hold water to the skin. It says it's fragrance free and removes dirt, oil, and makeup. It says it removes even long wear facial makeup. It's gentle on the skin, non-drying, and pH balanced. So right off the bat, we do have a couple major differences between this new cleanser and these two. So the hydrating facial cleanser is also for normal to dry skin. It looks very similar to this packaging. I kind of wish it had a different color just to keep things a little bit clearer for consumers, but it says it's for normal to dry skin and moisture balance. It also has three essential ceramides and hyaluronic acid, but nothing else is called out here from an ingredient highlight perspective on the label. The foaming facial cleanser is for normal to oily skin. So that's a little bit different. And then again, also has three essential ceramides and hyaluronic acid, but calls out that it has niacinamide in it instead of amino acids and that it's for oil control. So the addition of the amino acids is definitely something that is new and noteworthy here, something you're not going to find in either of these cleansers. And just the fact that this says it can remove makeup is also new and noteworthy because these cleansers do not have that claim. So definitely intriguing. Other than that, they all have really similar claims as far as being non-drying, gentle on the skin, and fragrance-free. So they should all be safe for sensitive skin types or a safer bet than maybe some other products out there. But nothing else I feel like that I need to call out at a high level. So let's actually dig into the ingredients here. Dig in like it's food. Okay, before we dive into some of the really exciting additions to this ingredient label, let's just start off by talking through the top five ingredients since that's what's going to make up the bulk of the formulation. The first ingredient here is water. Nothing to call out there aside from the fact that that's also the first ingredient in both of these cleansers as well. The second ingredient is glycerin. Glycerin's a humectant that's going to make the skin look and feel hydrated and healthy. It's an excellent hydrator. And then the other three ingredients in the top five are just different forms of cleansing agents. And the most important thing about those cleansing agents is that each of them are supposed to be gentle yet effective, so mild cleansing agents. All things that are supposed to properly cleanse the skin without disrupting the skin's barrier, without stripping the skin so that it feels dry or tight. Nothing like that, nothing that should irritate the skin, all just nice, mild cleansing agents. So if you are curious and wondering which cleansing agents I'm referring to, I will list those right here for you. Two of them are actually derived from coconut, so they're going to help to soften the skin while they cleanse and are actually known for their ability to make a formulation, that cream to foam. In this sense, if you're getting confused by the word foam and think that it means that really lightweight, airy, kind of bubbly consistency, that's not what this is referring to it's more so a lather if that helps because I know that that threw me off first as well okay let's dive into the rest of the ingredient label here so I was actually surprised because this ingredient label is quite a bit longer than the ingredient labels for these two cleansers so I was very curious to see what was going on here and we'll get into it one of the reasons why it's so long I'm not gonna sit here and read through every single ingredient on the label, number one, because this video would be forever long because of how long this list is, but number two, because that's boring. And there's a lot of things that I don't need to call out separately for you guys. Ingredients that basically just help to make this a cleanser at the end of the day, make this cleanser a cleanser, but really are nothing noteworthy that I need to specifically mention. The thing I will say about the ingredients that I don't highlight is that there's nothing in this cleanser that should be irritating or sensitizing, which is amazing. So that's one of the reasons I'm such a huge fan of CeraVe is because they really don't formulate with irritants or sensitizers pretty much ever, at least for the products that I've reviewed. And on top of that, it has really amazing ingredients in it, plus it's affordable. So 
went across the board. The thing that really stood out to me about this cleanser is just the number of different skin replenishing and hydrating ingredients that are present. There really are so many. So the first is something called PCA, which is actually a natural moisturizing factor. So that's something that occurs naturally in our skin that helps to maintain our skin's health and helps to moisturize the skin. And PCA is actually the second largest natural moisturizing factor in our skin behind amino acids, which is the other call out here and for good reason. And I counted 10 different amino acids in this cleanser. So I may have missed a couple when I was counting. Once I hit that point, I was like, okay, clearly there's just a lot going on here in the amino acid category. And what's most important is really just the amount of each amino acid present, not the number of them, because that's what's going to make an impact on your skin at the end of the day. But fun fact, amino acids actually work better when they are paired with multiple. So it's much better to have more than one amino acid in a formula just one is not going to make as big of a difference in a positive way as having a few different amino acids. But here we have much more than a few. So again, amino acids are the biggest component of our skin's natural moisturizing factors. Amino acids have antioxidant properties and they help to maintain our skin's health. So they help to make our skin look moisturized, hydrated, healthy, glowy. They help to improve our skin's texture. They may actually help to fight signs of aging. So they have a lot of different benefits. There's not a ton of research on each individual amino acid aside from the fact that they are known to help to hydrate the skin. So that's another reason why, aside from the fact that there's 10 of them, I'm not going to dive into each amino acid in detail because not every single one has extensive research out there on it, but they all are going to help to hydrate and replenish the skin. There are some amino acids that do have known benefits outside of just hydrating the skin, and they're mostly related to improving our skin's barrier. So improving the overall health of our skin's barrier, helping to heal barrier damage, helping to heal wounds more quickly, all of which are really, really nice benefits to have in any skincare products. So at the very least, we're going to have nicely hydrated skin from those amino acids, but hopefully on top of that, we will also have barrier repair, potentially some anti-aging there maybe, you know, improved texture and just improved overall health and appearance of our skin. And don't even get comfortable. I see you trying to sit back and relax right there thinking that we're done. We're not. There are many more ingredients in this cleanser that are going to help to hydrate and replenish the skin. So things like caprylic triglycerides, which are emollient plant extracts. Of course, the ceramides, which we have called out here. Ceramides are also natural moisturizing factors that are really nice for dry skin. Did we just hear my ankle crack? I hope not. I feel like this doesn't pick up on small sounds like that, but anyway, okay. This has sodium lactate in it. It has hyaluronic acid. It has cholesterol, another natural moisturizing factor that has emollient properties. So an emollient is something that's going to soften and smooth the skin. It also has an ingredient that actually has anti-acne properties, which is always very intriguing to me. It's something that's towards the bottom of the label. So I don't know the extent that that's going to have on your acne. It's something called phytosphingus scene and <laughs> Do you love how I just threw that out? Like that's just a normal everyday word for me because it's definitely not. <laughs> but that's an ingredient that actually has been shown to help to kill acne bacteria on the skin as well as being restoring and replenishing. So is that ingredient alone going to be something that clears up your skin if you use this cleanser? Are you going to be free from acne forever? Probably not. Again, like I said, it's towards the bottom of the label and it's also not an ingredient that's something that's going to be as effective as something like tretinoin or other forms of retinoids or benzoyl peroxide, but it's always nice to see something like that on a skincare label. If you're somebody that's acne prone, I know that that's always a concern for me. Is a product going to cause me to break out? What's in there that may cause me to break out or maybe help to prevent that? It does have that in the formula. So I'm not going to complain about phytosphingosine. Sign. Scene. I'm spacing. If I didn't say that this has urea in it, just know that it does and it's going to serve similar benefits to everything else that we just talked through. The only other ingredient that I would say is kind of miscellaneous and doesn't really fall in that skin replenishing, restoring, hydrating category is salicylic acid. And that's actually not at the very bottom of the label. So I thought it was worth bringing up. Again, it's not in the top five, it's towards the middle. 
but that is an ingredient that I'm sure many of you know about that also has anti-acne properties, not because it kills acne bacteria, but because it helps to unclog pores or prevent pores from clogging in the first place. So that's a nice addition as well. It's not going to be something that exfoliates to the level of other salicylic acid products, and CeraVe does have a salicylic acid cleanser that of course is going to have more salicylic acid in it. I do have a video reviewing that cleanser, by the way, and I compare it to the acne foaming cream cleanser from CeraVe. So if you wanna hear the differences and similarities between the two, I will make sure to link that video below. Those are the other two cleansers that we don't have here from CeraVe. However, salicylic acid actually does help to serve as a preservative in skincare products, so that just may be why that was added. So that's everything that I want to specifically call out for this cleanser. I'm very impressed by it. There are some really, really nice ingredients here, and I don't know, I was just a little bit skeptical. I was like, why are we coming out with another cleanser? It seems like it's going to be the same type of thing as this hydrating cleanser. It's not. There's a lot of really nice ingredients here, and I was much more impressed with this label than I was with this one. So let's actually do a little quick compare and contrast between these two cleansers as well. What are some ingredient highlights that they have in common? Ingredients that maybe are really noteworthy here that this cleanser does not have? You know, probably what I'm sure a lot of you are wondering. So let's start off with the hydrating cleanser since this one is definitely the most comparable in that it is made for normal to dry skin. Even though I think the consistency of this one actually ends up being more comparable at the end, we'll get to that. The hydrating facial cleanser does have a lot of those really nice ingredients in it that we already talked through here. And actually the second ingredient is also glycerin. So the first and second ingredients here are the exact same between these two cleansers, but the rest of the top five is different. So I will show you guys right here, the top five for the hydrating cream to foam cleanser versus the hydrating facial cleanser. Aside from that, this also does have cholesterol, ceramides, and sodium hyaluronate to help to hydrate and replenish the skin. It also has phytosphingosine. The one ingredient that's in this cleanser that is noteworthy that's not in this cleanser is tocopherol. However, it's towards the bottom of the label. So I hesitate to even bring that up because it's probably not going to be something that really does anything to your skin, especially because we're talking about cleansers here. That's the thing I want to make sure I'm level setting with is that these are rinse off products. So they're not going to have the same effect that a moisturizer would with some of those same really, really nice ingredients. I would love to see an amino acid moisturizer from CeraVe, please. And then the foaming facial cleanser actually has all of those same exact ingredient highlights in common as well, except for the vitamin E. This also has caprylic triglycerides, which the hydrating facial cleanser does not, but we do have that here in the new one. And then the standout here, of course, is the niacinamide. You're not going to find that in either of these two cleansers. That's an ingredient, that's amazing. I call it the unicorn of skincare because it has so many different benefits. It helps to improve signs of irritation and redness. It helps to decrease inflammation. It helps to improve texture, decrease the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and pores, and we love niacinamide. So definitely the highlight here, but I know that there are some people that are irritated by niacinamide. Again, in a rinse off product like this, it's not going to make that big of a difference and this may be something that you can use without issue if you maybe are sensitive to niacinamide and other products like serums but that's the one highlight here that we don't have here so i also will show you guys right here what the top five ingredients look like for the foaming facial cleanser compared to this new cleanser in case you're curious. All right, let's wrap this up by actually talking through the consistency and formulation of this new cleanser and how it compares to these two. So as you guys can see here, it's very, very liquidy. It's running down my hand pretty quickly, but it's also very creamy at the same time. So I personally think it's the perfect combination between something that is on the lighter weight side and a really nice hydrating cleanser. So I honestly love it. I really, really love the way that this feels. Super nice and soft, feels very hydrating, but is not something that feels heavy and greasy and oily on the skin. I don't like that because I have skin that leans oily, so I stay away from cleansers like that. It's just really nice. I was very impressed. So in this clip, I actually am wearing a foundation and I wanted to test out and see if this cleanser actually would help to remove that. In general, I just never use cleansers like this for makeup removal. Even if they say they're makeup removers, I just prefer to use a fragrance-free micellar water. The one from Garnier is actually my favorite of all time. I will link that below. 
but that's how I prefer to remove makeup and then I go in with a cleanser after that but I wanted to test out for you guys to see if it actually would because I know that a lot of you are going to be wondering that and it actually does you guys can see here I give you a little close-up of kind of the residue that came up after I lathered up that cleanser and it does really help to remove makeup so what I will say is if you're somebody that wears a lot of makeup, heavier makeup, I still would go the route of using something else to help to remove that. So whether that be an oil cleanser or a micellar water or something like a Pond's cold cream, I just think you're better off and safer going that route to make sure that you have no leftover makeup residue on your face. But if you're somebody that just wears tinted sunscreen or maybe a really lightweight CC cream or tinted moisturizer, just something that's on the lighter coverage side, I think this absolutely can work as a makeup remover, which is great. It's something that kind of reminds me of the Ordinary Squalane Cleanser. It's not as... I don't want to say oily. That one does build up to have a little bit more of an oily residue and I think is actually better for makeup removal than this. But it's kind of that same kind of thing where you first start off, it feels really nice, smooth and hydrating, but then it starts to lather up and that's when it actually helps to remove that makeup. So one of the reasons that I just don't love to use just a cleanser for makeup removal is because as you guys can see here, I do have a bit left on my face even after really rubbing with my fingers and warm water. And it's just hard for me to get that residue fully off. So what I did here is actually go in with a makeup eraser I also have face halos that I love to use and just took some warm water and used that to wipe off the remaining makeup residue and I thought that that worked great. So while this cleanser works, it's just not my favorite thing to use a product like this for makeup removal, you know? Like I could get it all off with my fingers, but I just feel like it would take a lot longer. I love how quick and easy the makeup eraser and face halos are. So again, I'll have those linked below. But overall, I love, love, love the formulation of this. It feels super nice. I didn't have any issues with it causing tingling or feeling irritating. It just got the job done. Gentle yet effective cleanser. Check. Compared to the hydrating facial cleanser, I would say at first they look kind of similar, like they have a similar vibe going on in that they both are creamy, but the hydrating facial cleanser is definitely thicker. It does not run down my hand at all. It actually stays put. And it's something that just feels a little bit heavier as you're rubbing it into the skin as well. I don't know that I would say that this one feels more hydrating when I really think about it. I think maybe the thing that feels more moisturizing about it is just the fact that it has a thicker consistency, but Afterwards, after I've used this hydrating facial cleanser, my skin does not feel more moisturized than it does with this. And I still think this does a better job at cleansing. So I would recommend the new one over the hydrating facial cleanser. And then compared to the foaming facial cleanser, at first glance, they look totally different. While this one is also really liquidy and runny, it's truly clear and has that gel-like formula, whereas this one is much creamier. But I actually think these are much more comparable than these two because as you start to rub the foaming facial cleanser into the skin it also lathers up quite a bit as well and is really similar to this new one so I think that is something that really surprised me yes I do think that this is probably a better option if you're extremely oily but I don't think this is something that people with oily skin would dislike I feel like this is something that's pretty universal even though it says it's for dry skin it's not really thick and heavy and oily at all. It just feels nice. I don't know. So between these two, I haven't been using this long enough to say that this is my favorite, but right now I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I just, I kind of liked it better and I really love this foaming facial cleanser. So take what you will with that. Of course, I'm going to continue to play around with it because I've been loving it and well, now it's part of my collection. So I'm going to use it up on its own. It's still a cleanser that I would recommend even if we weren't comparing it to these other two. I think it has amazing ingredients. It really gets the job done and does so in a way that's actually replenishing and doesn't feel stripping or drying at all. So that aspect of it by itself is amazing. But aside from that, I think it beats the hydrating facial cleanser. Might just end up being neck and neck with this one because of course the niacinamide is a nice addition. So 
You guys will definitely have to let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Have you tried this new cleanser yet? Is this also your new favorite? Are you interested in purchasing it after watching this video? I am very curious. We'll chat in the comments below. It's always exciting when we have something new from a brand like CeraVe because I know it's one that many people can get their hands on and it's great. Yay. We have new Vanna cream this week and new CeraVe. I did just recently upload a review on the new Vanna cream daily facial moisturizer. I compared that to the CeraVe daily moisturizing lotion. So I will also link that below if you're interested. If you are interested in purchasing this, it's actually not yet launched online. My mom actually found two of these left in store and snagged both of them, one for her, one for me. So thank you, mom, you're the best. But it is available for pre-order on Amazon. So if you wanna get your hands on this right away when it launches, I will have that linked in my description box below. If you do decide to purchase through that link, I do make a small commission, which helps to support my channel so that I can continue to purchase products to review for you guys. So very, very much appreciated if you do decide to purchase, if you use my link, but of course, no pressure at all. So that is everything for this video. Those are my initial Initial thoughts on the CeraVe Hydrating Cream to Foam Cleanser. I hope that you guys enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That helps to support my channel, but then also make sure that you won't miss out on my next video because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. If there's anything else that you would like to see from me next, let me know in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.